everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Today we have an unusual and pretty rare uh, grand clamp. And what's so unusual about this, kind of an art deco form, really unusual, it's pretty beat up. Let's go downstairs, see what we can do. Okay, with. today's project is this beautiful grand clamp. Now, I've never seen one of these before. This one's pretty big, you could see by my hand here. The, uh, the capacity, as far as the jaw goes, is uh, five inches or so. But you can see here, the overall length of the clamp is almost 11 inches. You know, it, it takes up a lot of room. It's a, uh, it's a beefy clamp. It's a quick-release clamp. And uh, because of that, because of the mechanism in here, which is nothing more than just a, uh, a spring load, but we're going to put this in a vinegar bath. I mean, the rust on here, the scaling, is pretty, pretty serious. Look at, you can see here, look at that. See that? Got a little weld spatter on there. Um take a good look at the rust I mean this is seriously <laughs> this could have been outside somewhere or whatever but this is it's pretty rough but look at the beautiful art deco lines and whatnot so this is uh something I'm pretty excited so I'm going to dump it in the vinegar and we'll be back in a couple days well here we are two days later two day vinegar soak and we scrubbed it down with the small hand wire brush and got off a, a tremendous amount of rust that was on here remember what it looked like we still have a lot of rust embedded in here. Uh, tried to clean up the threads, took the dental tool. There was some grease. Grease is always good in the threads. It protects it. But we do have some damage here. It looks like weld spatter. We have a little uh, indentation there. They copper coated the threads to stop the weld from sticking. This looks like it was, uh, it looks like it was somebody drilled it out. And um, I don't know why, maybe to use it as a press. I can't imagine why you would do that, but uh, you see the hole that goes all the way through. So um, now we're going to take it to the wire brush, the big wire brush. You can see the lettering here, how that looks, and see what we can do. See if we can get the rest of this uh, grunge off. Now, as you use wheels, they, uh, the wire wheels, they will wear down and they will wear down. Sometimes they, uh, the cheap wheels will start spitting these wires out at you and uh, the better wheels will just wear down like this. They'll just wear down. You know, this used to be uh, about an inch, uh, had an a inch larger in diameter and you can see that it's wearing down. Now, it's always good to keep those old wheels, especially if they're not spitting out the wire brushes at you because... Um, and a case like this, where all my other ones were too thick to get into these grooves of this clamp, this works just perfectly. And you can see here how it gets right into that groove. So it pays sometimes to keep your worn out wheels. Here we are for our post wire brush evaluation. We have a couple issues to address. The clamp came out really nice as expected with the vinegar bath and then the wire brushing. All the rust is gone from the clamp. Uh, but some of the issues that we have to address is, for example, this thread. You can see on the thread here we got a little void. And it looks like uh, maybe it touched a welding rod or something. We'll just file that out to make sure it's not interrupted in the threads. We have some weld spatter. I hate getting clamps from a welder. <laughs> uh, we have some weld spatter here on the, um, on the pad. You can see we'll, we'll file them off. And then the very tip here looks like he might have touched something a little bit too hot and uh, and over here you see that we're gonna file that off make that nice and flat a couple of little imperfections and things like that and that's where the post wire brush evaluation comes in handy you can see the lettering looks real good and uh, again we got it all rust free so let's go over and start filing Here's how we're going to address the uh, weld spatter onto the uh, pad. You can see we have a clamped in great grandpa's vise. We're going to put a block of wood and use the, uh, the threads, the clamping pressure of the clamp to hold that steady. And that's how we filed off the, uh, the weld spatter. And then you could turn it and you can also move this in more if you needed more room here. But that's the best way. Use a scrap piece of wood, and this way you can file around it and get rid of that weld spatter and make it look uh, presentable. Now 
Now, you know my favorite part. This clamp was really messed up when we started, really rusty. Okay, we are calling this clamp finished. And, uh, boy, this came out pretty nice, huh? Now, if you look over here, you know, give it a good coat of, uh, of that paint that we like. This is not a drip. That's a forge mark, just because I know you'll pick that out. Um, did this in red back here, the little thumb release. And... Uh, uh, it, it came out really nice and, and here is the model number of the clamp for ASL and again it's a grand clamp master or a grand master clamp I don't know how that was uh, marketed um, over here this came out nice how huh? we took all the weld spatter off and rust this was really in rough shape one of the few clamps that you know I, normally I would never buy a clamp in that kind of shape but this is such a an interesting you know like an art deco style clamp and uh, let me show you how this works with the quick release. Now to operate these type of quick release clamps, what you do, there's a little lever here that you press up and down. When it's spring loaded. So when you press it back, pull this up, that puts you into the position of open clamp. And then uh, just place it over whatever you want to clamp up. Press that forward like that. And then give a couple turns on the back here. And you are locked up tight. And you can see uh, you have a solid clamp. Now the thing is that because this only grips on one side of the threads, they never were as strong as any of the other ones that I showed you, but uh, they do have their their place, especially a lot of guys that are doing quick setups for different sizes and whatnot. This is a an interesting style for doing that. Okay, so I, I tried to find a little bit more information on this clamp, and it's very difficult. I, I looked up uh, Grand and a lot of tool um, uh, publications and a lot of it had Grand Rapids uh, Michigan had a tool company and a Grand Vice and, and clamp and uh, I know there were some quick release uh, vices made but it's uh, very difficult to find any information on the company uh, so a lot of times you'll look at it if you wanted to date something like this well you know this has an Art Deco design but the copper coated threads you know that came out just a little bit later for the for the welding and stuff and that kind of throws me up in the air so <laughs> i really don't know but i just thought it was an interesting clamp um you you every once in a while you see these pop up on uh on ebay and whatnot and and one thing that's interesting is uh this is a considered a four inch clamp but the opening is actually larger than four inches it's uh almost close to you can see here close to five so that's that's nice because a lot of times you buy a four inch clamp and they're a little bit tight um to lubricate this we use the 50 50 mix of uh the uh, red grease and the marble mystery oil because that has the cleaning properties and also uh, the grease is good for pressurization uh you could see here we uh with that little area of the uh that we had to fix that had the weld spatter and again we got it so that it, it operates smoothly all the way through the clamp so Anyway, just an interesting clamp. Thought you might like to see it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a nice day. Take care and bye-bye.